So, uh, <laughs> we're here again. Hooray! Yes. Back once back again. 2022. 2022 indeed, because 2020 and 2021 what? sucked. So, uh, I've, I've, I've sort of done a bit of <laughs> looking back over the, the few episodes and we got interrupted a lot and we had 10 pick additions and we had intern escapes and various other things. But technically, and we love technically, the next one is your choice. Ooh. Now a few additional things have been added to the mountain because... We can't stop. We, <laughs> we just we, can't. We have a problem. A few additional things, ignore that Pepsi Max, <laughs> have been added to the overflow. Um, but ignoring the overflow, if you can at all, Make your pick, mister. It's your choice. Okay. Well, I, I have been pondering the mountain for quite a bit, and I've been trying to think. Just the mountain, um, though, yeah? That's all you've just been the pondering. Mountain. pondering. Just the mountain. Only the mountain. The only thing I've pondered. Um, well, I want. We, we've done like a lot of sci-fi, done some action. We've even done sort of horror, you know, Nightmare at Noon. We haven't really I done... Just... <laughs> Nightmare at Noon horror, right. Howdy, fellas. <laughs> oh, shit. Pretty lost. What you doing? Making oh, a movie? Jesus. Well, it, it, there's sort of zombies in it. So it's kind of, you know, kind of. Yeah. You know, it, it, that is the intent of it, it, even if they did not pull it off. So I was I was thinking we need to we need to hit sci-fi. Uh, sci-fi? We've already hit sci-fi. We need to hit fantasy. Um don't pretend you just can't get away from sci-fi. I, I, sci-fi is your thing. I, I love sci-fi, but I also love fantasy. Um, and I was looking at the mountain. There is, uh, there's a lot less fantasy on the mountain than there is other things. That's just so, because sci-fi and horror are much easier to do on a low budget. Well, I mean, so we've got Nymphod Barbarian and Dinosaur Hell, which definitely sounds fantasy e. We have Deathstalker, which I think I know a little too much about. Um, the Defender, I'm not sure if that's fantasy or not. I think that's action. Uh, this... I mean, look, is not is that Dolph Lundgren? Is it Dolph Lundgren or is yeah, it? Yeah, it is. That's totally Dolph Lundgren. Um, it's also, oh, but hang on, that sticker. Um, maybe, I don't know. Um, so we don't actually have a lot of fantasy on the mountain to pick from. Which is why I think I can justify going for Nympho, Barbarian, and Dinosaur Hell. Right. Great choice, probably, and all the rest of it, but how the hell am I going to add that to the thumbnail? I had a hard enough job with Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2. Nymph sorry, you know, a Nymphoid Barbarian in Dinosaur Hell. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it yeah. sounds like softcore monster porn. Well, you don't want Graduation Day? Well, the fact that it's linked to Graduation Day makes me think either that's softcore porn or neither of them softcore porn. So, you know, it's 50-50. Across... There's not a lot of text here. A nympho barbarian and dinosaur hell. Across a hostile landscape, humans battle for supremacy against mutants. Deadly dinosaurs have arisen from a nuclear hologram. This is sci-fi. <laughs> So much for your fantasy. <laughs> and all of them are hot for an infoid barbarian. Oh, it's trauma. Oh, that this could be very bloody then. Trauma. Um, hey, people who don't know trauma is where James Gunn got his start. Um, and we've watched quite a few of them. There was a great one he did with ki they did with kids, where the kids are all murdering people, and then at the end of the the movie, the, 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 the murdering like their parents and stuff in a village, and at the end of the movie, the parents get together and murder the fuck out of every single child in the the, 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 the town in one great orgy of death. It's horrific, but fun. I think it's called Danger Children. Danger at Children play. at Play. Or yeah. Beware Children. At yeah, play something like that. Lloyd Kaufman. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but this is not James Gunn. Well, no. Uh, obviously. Um, I don't recognize any of the names. Directed by Brett Piper? No idea. Clearly, it was a classic. Yeah. 
A nymphoid barbarian and dinosaur hell. Huh. Oh, it, is that a monkey man? Huh. Yep. All right, do you want to go and watch a nymphoid or something? <laughs> Yay! That Pepsi Max is almost center frame. You need to find better places to put your goddamn drinks. <laughs> Go on then. He loves doing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello. <laughs> Trauma. <laughs> Oh, oh shit. Beyond the future in a land before time began. Hang on, what? The day after has become the day before. What? The Tromaville of the future has become a dinosaur hell. Wait, is this an advert? A nymphoid barbarian. <laughs> a nymphoid barbarian in dinosaur hell. Sure. <laughs> is this an advert for the film we're about to watch? I think it is. Have arisen from nuclear holocaust. And all of them are hot for a nymphoid what? barbarian what? in dinosaur hell. Okay. Cheese, a nymphoid barbarian in dinosaur This hell. is a spoof, right? International this... Linda Corwin has the nymphoid barbarian. This is an advert. Not since Raquel Welch, the incredible state-of-the-art special effects <laughs> and internationally obtained effects wizards, Red Piper and Alex Purney. The masterminds behind a nymphoid barbarian. I thought I was going to give a different film there. <laughs> masterminds. You are watching the real thing. A nymphoid barbarian in dinosaur hell. Primitive, brutal, horrifying, lust crazed in human monsters. Lust crazed in human monsters? Seductive, tantalizing prize. Okay, that has to stop. Oh, God. Barbarian in dinosaur hell. You must see. Oh, I'm trying. I am literally <laughs> trying to see it. Stop this. She's not prepubescent, though. She's clearly not. Okay, can we start the film now, then? Why oh. was that there? That's just confusing. <laughs> it's a pad to run time. That's why that's there. Okay, here we go, maybe. Or is this another advert? Oh god. I can't read that. He is so happy. He's, He's such a uh, happy kid. Uh, what? Oh, I don't need the dog. Did that eat the dog? I think that's what was implied. It's a sandworm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, oh, the no. giant sandworm hit me with such force it knocked me over. <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing, Cisco. <laughs> I thought someone was throwing around a can. No, I, I think, think that's supposed to be music. That sound is supposed to be music. I am starting to get the worrying impression that there's not actually going to be any dialogue in this. But so there hasn't Nobody's been actually said anything other than that very awkward opening uh, sort of voiceover narration. And if that's going to be the case, this is going to be a very long watching experience. This isn't going to be a great watch along audibly speaking because I we're just going to be sitting here in silence trying to interpret what's happening. Unlike Arena where we were waiting for something to happen but we had all the dialogue. On this one we have no dialogue. But we have an awful lot of music by Astral Warriors. We've had four lines of dialogue, and In two of minutes. those lines were a single word. <laughs> what is happening now? 
Are they falling in love? Is this the falling in love scene? As they try to drown each other? What the <laughs> fuck was that? Ah, cut. <laughs> I mean, I can understand cutting because the scene was going nowhere. And was awkward as fuck. Yeah. Where are they going? Why are they going? What is happening? And why is it happening? What the fuck with the music? I'm so glad I viewed that scene. After all, eh? Ah, well. Come to my arms, my beamish boy. <clears throat> A rapturous day. Kalu Kale. He chortled. Ha <laughs> ha In his joy. What the fuck did we just listen to and watch? That's the worst of the masks. I think that's like, just you wouldn't want a close-up of that mask like we just had. I was going to say, I think that's just... I think they're probably all like that. That's just the closest we've seen them. The opening... credits, slash whatever, where she described herself as super horny and stuff, she's really not. No, she's not. Which is a good thing. Yes, it's a very good thing. Um... But why describe it as this? Oh, now what? Because for the... Oh. That's a terrible angle. I can't see what we're looking at. Oh, you can see the... That is that is a mask. That's a, not a... I think it's... It's definitely a mask, because yeah. everyone knows it's a mask. No, no, but as in... <laughs> as in, I don't think it's a... Yeah, it's a it's mask. It's not a mutation. The, yeah. the character it themselves is wearing a mask. Suit yourself, pet. I mean, he, he's had ample opportunity. You were tied up and at his mercy effectively when he arrived, and he was nice. I appreciate him shaking his head because it just makes me think she really is feckin' useless. I was just thinking... She was, she was raised was, as a barbarian, supposedly. I was just thinking there, like, they really should have artefacts from the old world, and they, yeah. they should have a pack of matches or a lighter or something, and did the film thought of it too? They possibly should have just started the movie here. Well, it's a... How? How? Unless you're remembering them. That says ball. <laughs> I get the feeling that was an outtake and he actually genuinely fell. Yeah. Also, his sword just bent. <laughs> Sped up footage. <laughs> <laughs> this is embarrassing, Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's finally getting interesting. Again. Something's happening <laughs> at one hour into the film. <laughs> uh, that was pathetic. Speaking of pathetic. Right. And where have you been this entire time? Oh, you know, for a barbarian, you're just pathetic. Again, the lack of music is really drawing attention to all of this. The weird sound effects and the... <laughs> Oh, 
That was very weird. Did, he walked off in the other direction. That's your biggest problem? That's what was weird? That <laughs> was weird. This entire film, so far, start to almost finish, has been nothing yeah, but, but fucking yeah, but, weird. I mean, that was a complete breaking of the 180 rule, and I, I don't get what there were... What? What? I think that's supposed to be where the bad guy is, even though he clearly isn't. It's the guy with the gun again. He's back in the film. Why are you going into the water? Oh. Well, you know why he was hanging around and moving so slow there. Oh, look, he's out of the water already. What? What? Boing. <laughs> Probably wasn't supposed to bounce, but whatever. I, I love the fact. I love the fact that the size of anything oh. is always random. Okay. So hang What's on. What's happening to the other guy's revenge plot? Because <laughs> it seems to have gone out the window. He's moving. With some speed, Cisco. He is <laughs> he is mid. That that is haste right there. Oh, okay. At least he's supposedly catching up. I don't know how. Cause look at the speed at which he's moving. What? Why are we? At a... She's going there now. Of Why her would own you volition. do that? He was taking you. There. Why would you go to the place? We that... don't know he was taking her there. But of course he was taking him there. Where else was he taking her? But where he, he started on the beach. That's apparently where they live. Him and the weird fish people live on that beach. I assume. And then and so does the old man with the books. He lives no. on the beach. Look, there's more fish people. They're reusing the masks. Good for them. There's another stop motion creature in there. <laughs> ah. Ah. Oh, it's adorable. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Gonna get you something. Where are you going? Why are you going there? The guy you who have was... to know that the one place that that creature is definitely gonna do go is back to its home. Yeah, the one the guy you... who was holding you hostage got at least his arm ripped off. Head back the way you came. Yeah, you're you're supposed to be looking for your guy. He's not gonna be in here. Was he just feeding the... What the... What the f <laughs> oh, look at those hopeful eyes. Again, says, so look at the speed he's running. Oh! He's back. You came. She did. She we did. Do, we still don't why? know why. Also, you had an arm ripped off like half an hour ago. A brick in each hand. <laughs> oh no, did I miss the only funny thing in the entire thing? For behind the scenes information, 10 desperately needed to go out, so I had to let him out. So apparently I missed all of the awkward and whatever was funny. You know he only has one arm, right? You guys suck. Look at those hopeful eyes on the, the creature. Here you go, now you can eat. Yay! Oh. <laughs> 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 Not a dummy! <laughs> Before you say it, it wasn't a dummy. Definitely wasn't. 100% definitely wasn't. Finally, they got something to eat. They've been hungry. 
Hey, the end. Oh, fucking literally <laughs> the end. <laughs> and that's it. In in COVID times, and demand they show unless some unless identity. Unless you content. roll up and go and show this movie. Here, go. Put it on for me. Please put on still Nacht or an act. Or two. Right. I need to get back to pondering some orbs. Okay. So, that was awful. <laughs> Here's the thing. If we approach this as a regular episode and we did a normal thing and we, you know, critiqued the film's scenes and we made fun of the actors acting choices and the director's choices and the editing and all that sort of thing this would be a very short episode because quite frankly there's not a lot to say there's nothing positive to say from that sort of there's also sound. nothing funny or interesting to no to say. It, 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 it's not a movie we would recommend i don't know we'll skip into the end but that's there it is so here's the thing this would be a very, very short episode if we if we did it like that. And it doesn't feel like we can do that with this film. We're gonna I'm gonna start off by basically saying that this film's crap. This film is shit. It's that's the starting point, unfortunately. Um we can't build up to anything. We can't build up to the 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 climax of ooh, which shelf is it going on sort of thing. Like we usually do. Yeah. yeah. I can't even tell you about my favourite scenes because I don't have one. This is experimental madness. This film is shit. And there's no getting around that. And that's kind of where I'm starting from with this. My thought was, well, it's shit, so it should go on the shelf of shit. We have one other film on the shelf of shit, because McBain's actually below shit. That's its own thing. That's the, <laughs> the, the shelf, shelf of, of McBain. <laughs> but then I was starting to think, well, the only other thing on shit is Arena. <laughs> the oh. new undefeated champion of the universe. Fuck this film. <laughs> this film can't really be compared to Arena... Now, Arena is a shit film because it wastes everything. This is kind of a crappy film, but it doesn't waste anything. My question then is, is there anything in this film, production, music, acting, context, that elevates it from the shelf of shit to the bare minimum of shelf of okay it's the reverse <laughs> instead of me saying this is why this film belongs on the shelf of shit this is kind of does this film deserve being elevated off it and honestly i don't know if it does or not we're gonna have to discuss that I, we are gonna have to discuss i, I suppose it, is, it, is it a pity shelf of okay <laughs> is that what you're <laughs> suggesting um i mean we, I, I'm willing to have that discussion. Um, Good, because I, otherwise there's been no show. <laughs> um, I think it's worth pointing out, obviously, that you know, as we said, this this film had no budget. Its budget was $40,000, mm -hmm. which is equivalent to about $85,000 which around is, now. I would say this, which is fairly impressive, because how this came about is Brett Piper, the writer-director and basically producer worked with um, someone on a previous film and that somebody approached him and said, hey, if I can raise some money, do you think we can make like a post-apocalyptic film? Well, I say post-apocalyptic, that's, that's actually very wrong and we'll get into why. <laughs> um, we can put together like a, a, a castles, period, swords and sorcery film with lots of naked ladies as the selling point 
And he went, on a budget of next to nothing? Sure, why not? Uh, Brett Piper is like a, a, a monster and prop and prosthetics creator himself. He does special effects and that sort of thing. So he could do all that side of things. Yes. He... All they would need is some actors and uh, some locations and a script that he'd already written a while ago. And they could just put it together and then shop it around for distribution. And they're like, you know what? We can probably do that. And you know what? They probably did. <laughs> in, in, in the spirit of they managed to put something together, then yes, they succeeded to put something together. <laughs> Whether that counts as a movie or not, I'm not convinced. I do think that we have to we have to say that Troma retitled it so it was not originally titled Nymphoid Barbarian and Dinosaur Hell yeah that's a Troma I, title I, I think it's important to note that three of those words are incorrect she's not a Nymphoid she's not a Barbarian they're not dinosaurs but we were in hell to your point there, one of the immediate grating and off-putting things is, yes, Troma lies. Yeah. Troma, who was distributing this film, basically, I believe, didn't think the film was worth seeing. No offence to anybody. Um, and so they repackaged it as... Um, Barbarella Barbarian film with a nymphomaniac sexy Amazonian barbarian woman and, and that's what they sold it as just, however as Cisco said that's all a lie <laughs> just for the record that, I mean that is kind of why I bought it because that's what I I He's was all in... about the boobs <laughs> not, not about the boobs I, I, All about the nymphos. <laughs> what I pictured in my head when I hear Nymphoid Barbarian and Dinosaur Hell is some sort of campy bit of fun. Barbarella style. Mm -hmm. Only, you know, the sort of barbarian thing, but with a roles reversed. So you've got the, the, the barbarian S, effectively. The, the, the woman basically being the hero. She comes along, she saves the, 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 the in-trouble man who is useless. And... Yeah, she's up for sex, basically. And and I could see there being a lot of campy fun that they could have with that. They could have done a lot of things. That, and, and, um... A low-budget, campy Red Sonja. Yes. Because Ten came running into the room, <laughs> demanding to go out during the watch-along, much in the, in, in the manner of Meeks, kicked a can of Pepsi. It's like we're sponsored by Pepsi uh, this episode or something. Oh wait, you need to, you're supposed to turn it to the camera. Oh, is that it? Yeah, that's This one's got oh there it is. This one's got lime. I can't drink from it like that because the things are Ah, it's it's nice. <laughs> it's lime. From an acting standpoint, nobody in this is good, but nobody in this is awful either. They're not like they don't have any dialogue with which to act the first half of this film when we were watching it i thought was experimental or at least borderline experimental because yes there is no dialogue so all you're 
all you've got is that opening lie that was added to the film after production by Troma, and you're trying to use that to inform what's happening because you're trying to interpret what's happening because nobody's saying anything. Yeah. The only line of dialogue that was uttered, other than the guy, I don't know his name, and the girl, I believe she was called Leah, he Is calls he her a... or something? Something like that. He calls her a bitch. Ah, bitch. The only other bit of dialogue that gives any information to the the viewer is that this is the third time. I don't know why I'm doing that. That because that's four. That's either four, either four or, or two. two emphasized. This is the third time that um, they have been attacked, or at least she has been attacked, because he says this is the third time, and they should leave. And we're like, okay. So this is going to be some sort of trip, a journey movie where we follow yeah. them. Except they don't say where they're going and then they don't go anywhere. Well, actually, that's not no, true. They, they Technically, do. they go to the beach. But, but we don't know why. And then she gets kidnapped by right. the bad guy. The bad his... guy is just on the beach because he's out for a lovely day. She gets kidnapped... She escapes. She gets re-kidnapped. She escapes again. Goes to the bad guy's castle. The bad guy goes to his castle. She gets kidnapped again. The hero shows up. The bad guy turns into a dummy and falls off a, a cliff. The film ends. Hey! The end. Oh, fucking literally the end. <laughs> and that's it. There, there, are, there are flashes where you think, oh, this could have actually been a story. But it's not. And there's a lot of stuff that the actors... A lot of stuff in this movie that's just... Doesn't make any sense. Like, two dinosaurs... Like, when he's called... But the second time she escapes, the time she successfully escapes, it's because the bad guy and his mutant people find basically come across two dinosaurs fighting and they stand around and watch and she runs away and they kind of just ignore her running away until she's out of sight and then he gets really mad at the guy but there's no reason for them to stop and watch these two dinosaurs fighting they just it's it, it's like it's like it's the football game it's like they've just turned up to the super bowl as like oh we've got to watch this i don't care if she escapes you know it, it it's, you know, it's, it's baffling like, and it's not explained. It's not even that he gets angry with them either. He does not give a shit that she's running away. He's watching them and he looks at one of them and goes, eh, go get her. And he's not mad. The goon, the fishman goon mutant goes off, doesn't get her, comes back. And then he's like... Mm. Yeah, and, the, mm. and then to be honest, for a long time they're out of the movie. Yeah. Um, and I... That's and when, we thought that was it. That's, that's when, him done. That's when, you know, mask face guy turns up and he's a far more interesting character by the movie standards. By by this movie standards, he's, you know, he's fucking Noel Coward. Um, well, it's because some semblance of something is starting to happen. Nothing happens for the first half of the movie. And then it's you go, going, oh, look, they're, they're doing a thing. They're finding human technology... And it's ancient, and they don't yeah. really know anything about and that, it. And that, that's interesting, but it doesn't go anywhere. And they it don't doesn't do go anywhere. Here, here's the thing: um, uh, we we mentioned the budget for everything they've done in this movie, for everything they have in this movie. You could take the pieces that they have and turn it into a movie. <laughs> Not a good movie. I don't think you could make a great movie or a good movie, or you could definitely make a good bad movie though with what they have, and they didn't. Even accounting for the fact that you've got the whole trauma thing setting you up for something completely different. Which did so much damage. Sitting back and looking at it, no. Just, just, I don't, I don't think it, it quite meets these high standards of the shelf of sort of okay. Unemployed barbarian in dinosaur hell. 
You must see a nymphoid barbarian in dinosaur hell. If, if this was in black and white, it wouldn't have surprised me. In fact, if this was a silent movie where all the dialogue was on cards, it wouldn't have surprised me because the, the, the effects are pretty dated. Um, this was I will 1990. Say, uh, obviously, the budget is not there. For this, this clip I'm showing right now, <laughs> this was 1990. Obviously, the, they didn't have the budget to do, like, good special effects. It's men in costumes. Some of, the, some, of them aren't, some of the masks aren't too bad of the mutants, I think, partially because of the way they're filmed in that one scene. The rest of the scenes are kind of filmed up close and they look terrible. And this is, again, making the best of what you've got. You need to be doing clever shots with your special effects. and, and, and But maybe they didn't know how the, to the, do that. This... This is not a trauma film. This was completely finished, shot, directed, that terrible dubbing. Everything was completely done before trauma got it. This is well, a, this is like a two man production. I think his nephew is in it. His nephew he thought was dead when he was filming because he shouted cut and he's still lying face down in the surf and he's like, <laughs> Oh shit, I just killed my brother slash sister's kid, what am I gonna do? Yeah, it looks like shit. Two people made it. This is not Arena. Arena was a big studio oh, production. Oh, oh, yeah. This uh, two people with no money. Yeah, but they're selling it as a movie. They're that's a, being sold as a movie. That's being sold as a movie. Yeah, this that, is being sold as a movie. If you take out all the color and put it out in black and white, you wouldn't be surprised. You could sell it as an old school throwback without confusing people into thinking that it's supposed to be some sexy time I, with a barbarian lady, which it's not. She is a damsel in distress throughout the entire thing. The hero's journey of the guy who gets the gun off the old man on the beach is boring and drifts into the background. But at least they had some ideas. When they got to that weird bunker, and it says Terra Colony uh, Galileo, you start thinking, and you're like, oh, something's going to happen. We're going to find out something interesting about this world. The problem is, Troma's already told you it's Earth. After the apocalypse, which is not true. Brett Piper, the guy who made it, said it's taking place on a different planet. See, that in and of itself is an interesting idea, which is completely squashed and dead when we see it, because we're running along with the assumption that this is Earth post-apocalypse. We were saying during the watch-along, where's all the buildings? I even brought up Cyborg. <laughs> Jean-Claude Van Damme cut to that scene. Because they're burned out buildings and burned out cars. It's post-apocalypse after society falls. So where's society? Where's the fall of it? And we just thought, oh, they were too cheap to, to film any, anything like that. They couldn't find burned out buildings or whatever. But no, they weren't supposed to be there at all. And we were marking it down for that when that was never the point. The point was, as far as I can tell, that this was a Earth colony that either fell to the mutants... Or, like you said earlier, degraded over time to a point where they're just primitives now. Because pretty much everybody died out. The, the mutants got them, or they mutated. At the beginning of this, you're told that humanity mutated. And then you're shown the picture of a dog. And it heavily implies that that giant mutant uh, dinosaur thing is that dog. But we know now it's not. Because the dog was the thing that the hero was hunting with a crossbow. And we're like, no, don't get the fucking dog, you heap of shit. It was a lovely, happy dog. Waggy it was, tail he was and so everything. happy. And this guy is going to shoot him. And we're like, oh, well, he's clearly the bad guy. And it turns out he's sort of-ish the hero. Although, like you said, Mask Face is more heroic and dies to protect well, her. Ma Mask Face never hits her, never threatens her. I'm doing points, but I'm doing them behind here. So never, he never hits her, never threatens her. I can stick my fingers up, and, and I can do anything behind Pretty here. Much does everything he can to help her, feeds her, leaves her alone. Uh, there's no, not even a hint that he wants anything in return. He's just being nice. He's just because he's, he's found somebody who needs help. He's and then he hero. dies protecting her. Yeah. 
Um, he's the hero. He he is more the hero than the hero. Oh, this Oh, yeah, well, smile. now we have constantly smile, can we? You can smile as much as you want, Mix. Oh. You know why? Why? <coughs> Nobody can see. Oh, great. <laughs> and, yeah, we're all crazy. Ten zero to help. Yay, he's in shot. It's almost like they're having fun. Let's go. <laughs> 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 Danny, you left. And Mix went left as well, even though he's not Danny. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> <You're left. laughs> what the hell? <laughs> and then throw Danny across the room. <laughs> um. Um, but, sidebar, <laughs> but I've completely lost the plot now. <laughs> what was I saying? It never had a plot. What do you mean you lost it? No, no, I've lost my own plot. What was I saying? What, what did I start out with, <laughs> with before Space Raiders? Absolutely nothing. Right, so, this film is shit. This film is undeniably shit. Nobody really likes this film who has seen it. I wonder how much less shit people's opinion would be if it wasn't set up as super campy fun. And then... Because if you just watched it, it's... I would say it's borderline experimental. Weird music. We haven't mentioned the Astral Warriors. Um, really weird music and sound effects. You're desperately trying to figure out what's happening because nobody's saying anything, so there's no dialogue, so you don't... You're not having anything fed to you throughout the film. You're just watching their actions and trying to figure out what's happening or what's going on. A huge problem with that is you have the assumption that this is Earth post-apocalypse and that she is a young girl who grew up right after the apocalypse. Yeah? Because that's yeah. what she says. And then she also says that her juices started flowing and one day she woke up as a woman and now she's super horny and she's a barbarian and she loves it because she's super horny. <laughs> then you sort of smash cut to the movie where, no she's not, she is a young lady around 20, 20 to 25, who just wants to get on with her life and terrible things keep befalling her. She is not a super horny barbarian, she just wants to be left alone. I, I also wonder if, because if he said the point was to get lots of boobs and stuff, maybe she just basically said, no, I'll get my boobs out once for one scene. To really get the, the awkwardness and awfulness of the scene across. But here's the other thing. The, the, the flip side of that is he wanted a lot of it, naked women. Apparently one woman agreed to be in the movie. And I feel like a nymphoid. And it's become harder and harder and harder than ever to find a decent boyfriend. So I guess you could say I've become a nymphoid barbarian in dinosaur hell. Yeah. Uh, so. As I said right at the beginning of all this rambling nonsense, this isn't a regular episode format because we already know it's shit. And really it was just to discuss back and forth and maybe kick up enough dust that we'll get some clear sign. Cisco, obviously you don't recommend this to anybody. Nobody watch this film. <laughs> Is this film joining arena on the shelf of shit or given the context that it never should have been seen and trauma tricked people into buying it <laughs> by pretending it was going to be super sexy is it elevated anywhere near enough to not sit 
face down in the dirt, in the shit of the shelf of shit. I would still say it belongs on the shelf of shit. I think you can put all the the sympathy, all the all the all those sort of arguments as to to why it may be justified as to why it couldn't be better. But as I said, there are the the story could there are enough elements in this that you could turn it into something that you could argue. Well, actually, you know what. The special effects are terrible. The acting's not great, but you know what? They're, 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 they've done something with what they've got. They were, you know, that should be on the front of the box. You know, the, a lot of bad movies that we watch are, are are virtually no budget, but they're still entertaining in a way. This isn't entertaining. No, I've, I get the feeling that with a few minor changes, it could have been. Yes, but you really, really really have to get rid of that lie at the beginning that sets people up to watch a film that they're not about to watch. That is just poor filmmaking. Possibly. You, this this film doesn't tell a story. It whether you know and and which is why and I think, you know, judging it for on the you know, you, you consider what we said for um Arena, it didn't make the most, you know, it, it had all the opportunities, and it did nothing with them. Yeah. This had like one opportunity, and it failed to do anything with it. So it still belongs in the shelf of shit. Sorry, I don't think I'm ever gonna think that this belongs anywhere else. If you want to put it in it somewhere else, you can put it in the bin. Can't put it in the bin. We got graduation day. Eh. <laughs> you can still put it in the bin. <laughs> hey, if we haven't put uh, McBain in the bin for because it's got. Dog day. Dog days on it's all, it. It's all about the day. <laughs> then graduation day. We'll do a double bill. <laughs> dog graduation day. day and dog day. And if they're both shit, then we can just set fire to the lot of <laughs> Okay. Unfortunately, through our discussions, I don't think we were able to uh, give enough context to raise a nymphoid barbarian in dinosaur hell. Out of going on the shelf of shit, which to me is very good for one amazing reason. You get to do artwork for a nymphoid barbarian in Dinosaur Hell. And you have to make a small little picture that will sum up this film. Fuck. There you go. A nymphoid barbarian in dinosaur hell. Oh, well, you went all out on that, didn't you? I went further out than I should have. Yeah, we get one of the interns to do it or something. That's fine.